God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And his light that started shining at the day of creation will shine until Jesus comes back again. Amen. Do you believe it? Yes. How's your light shining this morning? It's so sweet for me to be here. My wife, Maria, is, um, she really tried. Um, you're going to hear our story a little bit. And she's been able to be with us on Friday and then uh, yeah, last evening. But um, all night long, she had this horrible headache. And it just won't go away. Um, so um, can we just do something real quickly? Would you pray for my wife? Yeah. All together in a loud voice. Bring Maria. You have needs of your own as well. And let's just take a, a few minutes to, and give those needs to our Father. Father God, in the name of our King of Kings, you are the God of this people. And you know them. You know them by name. You touch them from the top of our heads and the bottom of our knees. Lord, night to the world, Father. And speak to our hearts today. For those of us who are suffering, I pray that we are suffering at your feet and accept your goodness for us. In the midst of suffering, may we see Jesus high and open up. May we see recognize that you are the God who cares for us, who loves us, who knows us by name. And so we give you our heart's desires to know you. To make you we give you our burdens, the burdens of our children and of our families, the, build, uh, the, the burdens of our neighborhood, the burdens of this church. We lay at your feet and ask, Jesus, would you come in might and power and uh, answer our prayers for the glory of your name. I pray that you would be peace to our heart. We thank you, God, that you are Emmanuel, that you are God with us. And so we praise your holy name. We worship you. We ask that your light would shine brightly in this place today. I do pray for our youth and the kids as they're in their classes that you would speak truth into their hearts. That you would open their eyes to see this world as you see it, Jesus, and give them the courage to follow you wherever you would send them. So we praise you, Jesus, and we give you this time. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord, the soon and coming King, Emmanuel. Amen. It is a joy to be a part of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. And um, normally Maria would come up and, and thank you. Thank you for walking with us. Anybody before this uh, Friday know of us? <laughs> there you are. Uh, but for the most part, have you ever taken time to say, God bless a missionary today? I don't know their situation. I don't know their struggle. But God, they need blessing from you today. And you prayed and we received blessing. So thank you. Thank you for giving to the Great Commission Fund, that fund that uh, allows us to come. And I don't have to talk about finances. I can say thank you. Thank you for sharing your God's goodness in your life with us. Because you have given, because you have prayed, we have spent 30 years overseas. No, I don't look like it, do I? <laughs> God has been faithful, and he will remain faithful. And today I want to talk a little bit about his faithfulness. Part of his faithfulness is I have two sons. Uh, pastor prayed for our oldest son who's walking away from Jesus. How can you taste and see that the Lord is good and then turn your back on him? But our God is faithful. And uh, we have a second son. And uh, among them, we have seven grandchildren. And this past summer, in the heat of the summer, we had three of our grandchildren with us. We have a little one-bedroom apartment. And it's great to be all crowded in and spend several days with our grandkids because we know soon we won't have them near us. And so we went outside to play, and I forgot to put on their hats. And Gracie, the second one, is so susceptible to the sun that she burns really quickly. And mom had told me she's got to have lotion all. I didn't do any of that stuff. And so as we're outside, Gracie is in my shadow. Everywhere I went, Gracie would find my shadow and stay in it. 
And she was having a blast. Now, in my language, where we are in Africa, well, you saw part of that, uh, Te is the name for grandfather. So I'm Te Yusuf. So she would say, Te, Te, I'm standing in your shadow. <laughs> you know what the key was? She had to keep her eyes on me. She had to know where I was to be able to find out where my shadow was. And we had a blast. The other girls were, the, the, the older girl is six and she was having fun and the younger girl is uh, three at that time and she was having fun, but Gracie was just having a blast with Tay. And pretty soon I got the sweetest hug around my legs. She just buried her face in me and hugged me and said, Tay, I love you. Because she was resting in my shadow. My first question is, are you in his shadow? There is an awful light that burns outside of his shadow that wants to destroy us. But are you resting in his shadow? 1988, my wife and I and our two boys left America and we traveled to France and suffered in Paris for a year and then went to Mali in West Africa where we had the, the joy of reaching out to people who had never heard the name of Jesus. To work among a people group that had never had a, a, a Christian witness um, outside of one man, and you saw his picture there, his name was Bokari Saba. Bokari was a, a, a young man that gave his life to Jesus way back in the 30s, and his people kicked him out. They said, we don't want you here. You're not following our ways. You're, not, you're no longer one of us. That's okay. God had a great plan for Bokari. That man was used throughout uh, southern Mali and into Burkina Faso and planting many churches among other people groups. But his own people rejected him. So from the 30s until 1989 when we arrived, there was no continual witness among this people group. And God gave us the opportunity to come and learn their language uh, the, the people are the fishing people. That's why we have all the fi uh, fishing uh, pictures on there in the videos. Um, they live their life along the river, and not much has changed in their way of life until 1989 when Jesus broke through in new ways. Now, those of you that have walked with us on Friday and Saturday, you know a little bit of our story, so I'm not going to go into all of that. You need to talk to somebody else that was here. Ask who was here on Saturday, and you'll hear our story. But I want to take you to the Word of God. Because it's not, you know, my father was an Alliance pastor. I grew up in the Alliance. I love the Alliance. I love Jesus even more. And one thing he told me, Joseph, people don't want to know what you think. They want to know what the Word of God says. So one of the sweet things that uh, you have in front of you, I trust, is your Bible. We live in a place where the Word of God is sparse where even in our churches, the majority of people cannot read. And so I value this book, and I value the time that we're going to spend turning from page to page. So if you have your Bibles, take your Bibles and turn to Psalm 66, verse 5. This is still all my introduction. We haven't even got to the meat yet. But I want to invite you, um, at the back of your uh, bulletin, there's a blank page. Feel free to write down all these verses that I'm going to give you. All right. Psalm 66, 5 says, Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. Can I get an amen? amen. Is not our God awesome in his deeds? Come and see. And that's what I want us to do today is just by our lives, come and see what God has done. We've been church planters uh, among Molly's fishermen for 23 years. And at a time when we thought um, we were just seeing God move in great ways, God took us out of there and took us south 100 miles to the country of Burkina Faso, where we've worked for the last seven years. We went from an area where there were no Christians to an area where there are now over 63 churches in uh, 61 villages. Uh, we were in a place where th there was no preachers of the word of God to where we have over 60 uh, pastors who are spreading the word of God. 
So now, why in the world are we here in the States? In uh, 2017, July 21st, we were going from our house across town to a pastor's house because my wife was going to do some training for Sunday school teachers in our province. And uh, coming home from there, we had a motorcycle accident and she was thrown. Uh, she hit her head. She busted the bone in her, uh, in her leg and she got scrapes and bruises, dislocated her jaw. Um, she was messed up. Uh, so we were evacuated out and came back to the States for three months. Uh, so November 1st of 2017, we returned, thinking that God was going to continue to heal Maria and that we would see his hand on her in, in special ways. So November, December, January, she rested, um, and I continued ministry going back up uh, to the, the place that was our home. And... Um, in March, she re-injured everything. April 1st, we arrived back here in Cleveland. April 1st, 2018. And uh, up until May of this year, there was not a whole lot of change in my wife. And so I have to say, God, am I resting in your shadow? Let's take a look at what the, the Word of God says. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 91, please. Psalm 91, verses 1 through 6. This is what the Word of God says. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. This morning, I want to talk about resting in the shadow of the Almighty. He has been my help, and he covers me with his wings. As we look at this passage, what are the results of dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty? And I've come up with three things that are very clear here. F protection, direction, and exaltation. In this passage, we uh, a little bit further on, Psalm 91, 14 and 15 says, Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. Do you know the name of Jesus? By the way, there are uh, several videos on that uh, USB thing. If you want to download them all and show them sometime in the future, that would be great. One of them is the great name of Jesus. Do you know Jesus? When we arrived in Mali, uh, our people are, are followers of Islam. They're proud of the fact that they are uh, some of the first in our area to come to Islam way back in the 12th century. They know the name of Jesus as Isa al Masiu, but they have no idea what it means. What does Jesus mean, brothers and sisters? Savior, saves. What does Messiah mean or Christ mean? The anointed one, the sent one, that's our Jesus. And so we came to proclaim Jesus as more than just a prophet. But he is and always will be the son of God. He will and always be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is and always will be Emmanuel, God with us. He will, is and always will be your intercessor. He always lives to make intercession for us. Do you know this Jesus? And in knowing this Jesus, are you making him known? Because most of the people around us 
Over 2.2 billion people in this world today have never heard the name of Jesus and have no understanding of a God who loves and cares for them. I could go on all day and tell you stories about the, 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 the philosophy of the fishing people in Mali. That God was so upset with man that he moved away from man. And he's so distant from man, he has no interaction with man today. Is that your God? There are a lot of us who hope that's our God. I don't want God to see what he, I'm doing, right? When I tell our friends that God is present, they say, don't say that. If he's present, he sees. Do you remember Abraham? and Sarah. They hear from God that they're going to be the father and mother of a great nation. And so what do they do? They take it into their own hands and they take this slave. We talk about our daughters today. They take this slave and say, you're going to be the one God's going to use. Her name is Hagar, right? Our Muslims love Hagar. I love her, too, because she leaves. She runs away because Sarah isn't treating her well, right? And she goes out into the desert, and she's going to die there. And God visits her. And she's the only one that we have who names God. The God who sees me. Brothers and sisters, our God sees you. Not only does he see, see you, he knows you and he loves you. I can't talk about love with our bozo people because we have no word for love in our language. Can you believe that? Go to 1 John 4 sometime and look up what, where love comes from. Love is of God. You don't, know, you don't know God, you don't know love. So our people don't know a God who loves, but... They need to know that there's a God who sees. And as you're walking through the struggles that you're walking through, I don't know what you're going through. You may be living a, a wonderful life and have much joy and peace and happiness and contentment. And I say, praise God. Our God sees you and knows you. You may be going through the deepest hell that you've ever gone through right now at this moment. And I'm here to tell you, God sees you and he knows you and he loves you and he covers you with his wings. Yes, yes, yes. And he says, taste and see that I'm good. Yes. You may have people in your lives that are going through a tough time. They need to know that there's a God who cares and loves them. A God who wants them to know more than just this rough life. God offers protection. I'm just going to give you passages. Write them down. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? That psalm. Psalm 121. Isaiah 25, 4. For you've been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress. So Psalm 121, Isaiah 25, 4. You know, when I look at this and I speak protection, one of the struggles that we have in where we are in West Africa is this philosophy that if you follow Jesus, then you're going to have all the good things in life. They want wealth, they want health, they want protection, they want everything. But scripture is more full than just you're going to be blessed. God has promised protection from discouragement. He's promised protection from disappointment. He's promised protection from despair and feelings of failure. He's promised a protection from distress, which would be extreme anxiety. But God has never promised that he would protect us from suffering. God has never promised that he would protect us from pain. God has never uh, promised that he would protect us from hardships or affliction or discomfort or torment. Jesus himself said in John 16, 33, in this world you will have tribulation, tribulation which is hardship affliction, anguish, burdens, persecution, you can count on it. Amen. Yes, sir. 
The Apostle Paul tells us in Acts 14, 22, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. So I'm not here to promise you great things. I'm here to promise you God's presence through it all. And he does protect. You know, one thing Maria said is th there were months where Maria could not interact with people. She could not think. She could not look. She had uh, dark sunglasses on and then um, uh, earplugs in and sound ending headphones because any interaction was just overwhelming. And she said, Joseph, here's what I feel. I feel at this moment I've never been closer to my God. My daddy is protecting me and he loves me. And she said, I woke up this morning and there's a, this picture that I have that I'm cradled in God's arms. And I hear his heartbeat and I feel his warmth of his breath on me as he says, I've got you. And she said, Joseph, I know what God was saying. When I was flying through the air, God was saying this far and only this far. Do you know this, God? Are you walking with this understanding? So he gives us protection. The sweet things about my protecting God, as my grace he was, I also gave her direction. I found myself making sure she was staying in my shadow. Gracie, where are you going? Where are you going? And I would, I would protect her, but I would direct her too. There were things we wanted to do, so I would make sure that she was following behind me, going to where we needed to be. Psalm 31.3 says, write it down, Psalm 31.3, uh, For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. You take me out of the net they've hidden for me, for you are my refuge. I want to give some more verses. I'm not going to go through them. Isaiah 30, 21. Isaiah 30, 21. Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord will guide you always. John 16, 13. Speaking of that comforter that dwells within us. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. And then again, Psalm 32, 8. So did you get all those? Yes. When we arrived in Africa, um, back of buses and trucks and on cars, there's always this phrase. L'homme propose, mais Dieu dispose. Anybody speak French here? The heart of man plans his ways, but the Lord establishes his steps. These are non-believers quoting scripture that they know nothing about. Loam proposed, man proposes, but God is the one that does it. That's from Proverbs 16, 9. You know, as we go through this directing uh, process, there's an element, a component of, of resting. January 1st, 2017, I asked God, give me a verse for this year as I do every year. I want a verse that I can dwell on, that I can, that you speak to me and you guide me. I want something that I know comes from you. And he led me to Psalm 46, 10. Yeah. You know the verse? Be still and know that I am God. I hate that verse. <laughs> I am not a still person. My mama used to say all the time, Joseph, would you just sit still? No, I can't do it. I was talking with Pastor Ron on Friday. I can't believe this. He's been here forever. How do you do that? We've been in so many places over 31 years, and he tells me I've been in two places all my life. I don't know how that happens, but he is God's man for this place. And so God uses my wandering to say, I'm going to use you someplace else, but be still and know that I am God. People, are you resting in him? You may hate the situations of your life right now, but can you say, I'll rest. 
I'll rely upon you. You cover me with your feathers, so I'll rest in you. There is a third thing that's really exciting to me, because I'm human. This third one is exaltation. Huh? How does staying in the shadow of the Almighty exalt me? Well, take you to Psalm 18, 48 and 49. Psalm 18, 48 and 49. The psalmist says this. He frees me from my enemies. You exalt me above my adversaries. You rescue me from violent men. Therefore, I will praise you, Yahweh, among the nations. I'll sing about your name. One of the things I love to do is sing. I love our worship time this morning. My wife and I met in choir in high school, a lot longer than 40 years ago. Uh, yeah, God is faithful. But we love to sing. You know, the bozo, they don't sing. The people group that we work with, they, they, they do some chanting, but uh, I don't know if it's on that. We have a... Um, uh, the Bada, the first believer, uh, sitting there uh, as he's working and the men are sitting around doing nothing and the women are busy doing everything. And I, I start hearing him chant something. And I hear the name of Jesus. And so I shout out, Bada, what are you singing? And everybody quiets down. And he said, I'm singing about my Savior. Sing it for us, brother. And he did. And it's the story of salvation that God, who was God, get, sent his son, his one and only son, to be the only way to know God. And that God's desire is that every man, woman, and child come to repentance. And he's, yes. he sings salvation. And all these people are around going, I've never heard that song. He was exalted at that moment as the man of God before his people. I always wanted to be six feet, four inches. I never made it. That's why I say, I'm not overweight, I'm just short for my weight. <laughs> At six, four, I'd be great. I love basketball. Believe it or not, in high school, I could dunk a basketball. Spud Webb, do you guys remember him? He was my hero. I never have been exalted among men outside of Jesus. As we've walked uh, 30 years among non-believers, there's a respect that comes to me because I honor Jesus. I have heard people say, women tell my wife, if my husband were the man of God your husband uh, is, we would be happy in our home. And I look at my life and say, but you don't know my life. You don't know that for the first five years of our marriage, my wife lived in hell. I was a demanding, abusive man. My boys, I love them. <laughs> Our pastor came to visit once. He knew what was going on in our house. And uh, Joshua, the oldest, ran back and got a wiffle ball bat. You remember wiffle ball? And bring it out and set, brought it out and said, Pastor, Pastor, look, this is what my daddy beats me with when I don't obey him. But God changes people. Yeah, I still get upset at some of you Cleveland drivers that don't know how to drive. <laughs> but God is closing my mouth. <laughs> hey, I live in Africa. Red lights don't mean anything. <laughs> what are you stopping for? We could have made it. <laughs> be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted. And that's, well, I, I've given you the three, protection, direction, and exaltation. Many of us thrive on exaltation. We want to be known. We're nobody in the alliance. And that's sweet. 
We'll never be leaders. We'll never be up to speak and do all those things. But we're one just like you. Chosen ones. Chosen for a purpose, and that, that is to exalt the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, as we come to a close, I, I need to ask you. Are you resting in the shadow of the Almighty? Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, throughout Scripture, I am with you is throughout. That's why at this time of year, Emmanuel, God with us are you walking in that presence do you know that john piper says this in a book called a hiding place for the helpless god has always i'm sorry desperation does not demand or deserve it pleads for mercy and looks for grace are you demanding of god certain things you, you gotta do it this way god or are you seeing his mercy and demanding for more? Oh, God, I plead for mercy. All right, here we go. I don't do anything without a challenge. So what are you going through? Trials and tribulations, struggles and hardships, peace and rest. Our God is with you. Have you learned to rest in the shadow of the Almighty? His, you're resting in His protection, in His direction, and in His exaltation. Is God leading to new areas of service? We've closed the door for where uh, we've been in, in, in Burkina, and God is opening up a brand new place for us. A place that's entirely Muslim. A place where people don't like people who follow Jesus. And we say, God... Are we worthy of that? Send us forth. Perhaps God is leading you into new areas of service. I love that you want to put people to work here. That's what the church is all about. I've been in too many churches where the pastoral staff does the work and everybody comes and enjoys. It was never meant to be that way. So I ask you, what must change in your life for you to walk in his shadow, keeping your eyes fixed on him. Today we have the opportunity to walk in newness of life, to begin to rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Like my Gracie, are you reveling in the presence of our God and Father? Are your eyes fixed on him, following him wherever he goes? We've been praying for salvation to take place here today. I come with my eyes wide open. I know that there are people in this place right now that you've been playing a game. You, you, you don't know Jesus. You think you do. But he's, you've never allowed him to know you. That's why we have this place here. Come and meet Jesus. There is a world that needs you. Whether it's here in Maple Valley, in Cleveland, in Ohio, or around the world. The need for people to testify of Jesus will not end until the King of Kings comes back again. Are you preparing the way? In this Advent season where we celebrate His coming, but recognize that He's coming again, are you involved? Come and find Jesus today. Pastor, come on up. <laughs>